The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. Keep up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds Empire. Just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us, and someone will play for you in just a moment. If I could only fly if I could only fly I'd bid this place goodbye to Come and be with you From newsounds.org, welcome to another of our Soundcheck podcasts, our series of live in-studio performances streaming on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. The singer and songwriter Blaze Foley never hit it big, but he wrote some great songs, songs that were later covered by John Prine and Willie Nelson, Nancy Griffith. This song, If I Could Only Fly, was famously covered by the great Merle Haggard. Now, if you've never heard of Blaze Foley, that's okay. The new film called Blaze will take care of that. It tells the story of Blaze Foley's tempestuous career. It was co-written and directed by Ethan Hawke, who's making a return appearance here in our studio. And the cast is full of musicians, including Ben Dickey, who plays Blaze Foley, and Charlie Sexton, who plays his friend, the songwriter Towns Van Zandt. They're all here with us in the studio to play some of the songs from the film, Blaze, beginning with this one called Clay Pigeons. I'm going down to the Greyhound station Gonna get a ticket to ride Gonna find that lady with two or three kids And sit down by her side Right until the sun comes up and down Around me about two or three times Smoking cigarettes in the last seat Try to hide my sorrow from the people I meet And get along with it all Go down where people say y'all Sing a song with a friend Change the shape that I'm in Get them back in the game and start playing again I'd like to stay but I might have to go to start over again I might go back to Texas I might go to some place that I've never been Get up in the morning and go out at night I don't know, I have to go home to being alone Change the words to the song Start singing again That I already know I could build me a castle Of memories just to have Somewhere to go Got the days and the nights That it takes to get back in the saddle Again Feed the pigeons some clay Turn the night into day 
start talking again when I know what to say. I'm going down to the Greyhound station, gonna get a ticket to ride. Gonna find that lady with two or three kids and sit down by her side. Ride until the sun comes up and down around me about two or three times. Smoking cigarettes in the last seat. Try to hide my sorrow from the people I meet and get along with it all. But down what people say, y'all. Feed the pitches some clay. Turn the night into day. Start talking again when I know what to say. That is a good one. Clay Pigeons, a song by Blaze Foley. He is the topic of the new movie called Blaze, which is in theaters now. The original cast soundtrack includes that song uh, played by Ben Dickey and the original cast. But here it's Ben with Ethan Hawke and Charlie Sexton. Uh, guys, welcome to Soundcheck. It's uh, great to have you guys here. Great to be here. Yeah. E Ethan, you've been here a couple of times before, and both times were kind of music related. There was the... Uh, the, 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 the ball, Brecht, yep. yeah. the Brecht play, the, the yeah. Brecht play, and then the uh, the the film about Ch Chet, uh, Baker, Chet Baker, Born to Be Blue. So, uh, so it won't come as a surprise to our listeners that you're musically inclined. But how did you incline to this music? How did you find out about Blaze Foley? Well, uh, Blaze is I call him the snuffleupagus of the outlaw country <laughs> western scene. You know, <laughs> uh, people who walk down those roads and fall in love with Willie and Merle and Towns and Chris and Guy and Joe Ely and you slowly might hear rumors about the guy who Drunken Angel is about. Mm -hmm. The Lucinda Williams song. Exactly. And John Prine covered Clay Pigeons. Ben, uh, Ben's father sent us, Ben and I have been friends for 15 years and Ben's father we, we were having a conversation about Blaze. I don't exactly remember how it started, whether it was why he wasn't in Heartworn Highways or, uh, I don't know, we, but, but Ben's father sent us a mix CD that had about six or seven songs on it, and we were on a vacation together and started listening to it a lot. And with it, Ben's father sent us back in the days when the internet was just starting. You could print out, it was a printout of four different accounts of Blaze's death, uh, none of which yeah. were true. Right, and and it, it was, in, it felt a little bit like Robert Johnson. Like, who is this mysterious person? And you find if I could only fly and the, feel the power of that song, and you can't believe you haven't heard of this person. The yeah, songs are yeah. so good, and that started a fascination that evolved into the movie that you saw. Yeah, which starred Ben as as Blaze Foley. So Ben, uh, if your dad knew his stuff, did you grow up with these songs? Well, you know, what's funny is that I turned my dad on to John Prine in like 2003, and he is somebody, my dad's one of the biggest John Prine fans today, and he should have been there the whole time. He was like, how did I miss this? How in the <laughs> yeah. world did I miss this? So when John put Clay Pigeons on that album, he was the one who clocked it and was like, you know, I just heard it and was like, that's another great John Prine song. And I knew if I could only fly, and I knew of Blaze's name, and I'd seen a picture of him sitting on a log playing a guitar. And <laughs> that's all really I had in my, my mind's eye toward him. So when Clay Pigeons came out, my dad was like, you know, he just went down the rabbit hole. He's like, this guy's amazing. Have you heard about him? And I was like, I just know his name. I don't know much more. So he sent me this CD, and like Ethan said, he sent me all this information. And it was an overwhelming, just like my dad with John Prine. How did you know? How did we miss this? But in regards to the music I grew up with, I was the youngest of three, and I was the youngest of all the cousins. And people, my family, I was the aggregate to all the LPs. Mm -hmm. They all came my way, and you know, I had, I had at one point. <clears throat> sadly, a lot of them were lost in the flood. But I had like every Sun record that ever came out, all these Chess records, and. I had these compilations from the 60s that had blues players on it, and then I eventually Jimi Hendrix led me. When that Jimi Hendrix blues record came out, there was all those pictures of every bluesman that Jimi had ever, you know, 
I, they were all half to nose for me right, after that. Right. So I grew up with music. I grew up around music, but I also was lucky enough to inherit this like library where yeah. I just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, uh, and and there you are playing then Blaze Foley <laughs> yeah. uh, on on screen in the film called Blaze and and. Charlie, you play Towns Van Zandt, uh, a still not widely known, you know, but certainly yeah. better known than, than Blaze Foley. Yeah, but strangely, the Blaze's most famous friend is someone that's not really famous. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, Which actually is very apropos. Uh, it's perfect. perfect. You know. Now, <laughs> d did, you, uh, did you grow up with either of their songs? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I grew up around all that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's just a weird thing because it's sort of, uh, yeah. I get I, it's when you ask me that question, I just kind of go back. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Towns was a family friend. I did, uh, really close to my mother. My brother was really close to Towns. They worked on songs together. Right. Blaze was actually a really good friend of my mother too. Um, my brother and I, who's also a musician, Will, um, we weren't really friends with Blaze. <laughs> Because I don't think he particularly wanted to be at that time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he was, uh, and and I think Ethan, you're. And I think he struggled with it. I, I tell them all the time. I have this one vivid image of Blaze in my mind. It's sort of looking at me like, man, it's kind of smiling and smirking, and God, I, your mama's sweet, and I know I'm supposed to like you, but <laughs> by design, you're the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ethan, that at least is a story that comes from a primary source, but as you already alluded, the story of Blaze Foley is one of, you know, contradiction and, and mystery and, and actual myth-making, right? Yeah, which is part of the tradition of music, yeah. you know, which is what I, I think uh, where I was, I was drawn. I think that I loved that aspect that you know if you see say i was here on this show with the chet baker movie right? right well there's certain things you have to do in a chet baker movie you got to play my funny valentine mm -hmm. you, there's certain things you got to have the william claxton images you got to tip your hat if you do johnny cash you've got to play Folsom prison blues you've got to play you know you, you there's certain things you have to do with blaze was nothing we had to do yeah uh -huh. It was it was magic. I mean, I remember I showed the movie the first cut to Lewis Black, who was a journalist from the Austin Chronicle, guy who turned me on to the memoir that Sybil wrote. Sybil and Rosen. Sybil Rosen wrote this book, Living mm -hmm. in a Woods in a Tree, and I couldn't we we couldn't have made the movie without her. Right. Her insight and her hit on why Blaze is significant was extremely interesting and extremely personal, and made the movie not some you know, idea of a movie. But anyway, he, he couldn't believe that we had made a movie where the most famous person in it was Towns Van Zandt. He, he, <laughs> he, his brain couldn't boggle. You, you say his name as if it was, you know, Moses or something, and I've spent my <laughs> Which life... Which in some ways it is, yeah. in our circle. In that you know, circle, in yeah. That, I mean, that, if you talk about Lyle and Guy and... Oh, to anybody who... Steve, you know. <laughs> or Chris, or yeah. people who really care about music as literature. Right, right. In that vein. So, can I throw in a few? La so, Lyle is Lyle Love it. Chris is Chris Christopherson. Who yeah. else did you say? Uh, Guy Clark. Guy Clark. Guy Clark. Steve uh, Earl. Yeah, Steve, Steve Earl. Steve. You know, these are. So, but what I'm trying to get at Sorry. here is, I could, <laughs> I could piece together a musical, using what was for all, for most audiences, original music. Right. That was has already stood the test of time, right? So I can tell Blaze's story using If I Could Only Fly, using Clay Pigeons, using Cold Cold World, using Postcard, these songs that I know for a fact are world-class songs that 98% of the audience doesn't know. So Ben is free not to do an imitation. He doesn't, you know, the challenge to playing Chet Baker, for example, is you got to live up to the idea right. of the meaning that Chet has. And you're never going to be that, so you have to do something else. But it, it freed, because people don't really know who Towns and Blaze are, it freed us up from imitation and from doing some kind of reheated performance. Like, here's the song you love, not as good as it was done <laughs> originally, and not as, you know, we could, we could present it to you in a new way that, yeah. uh, for most audiences. And, and it let us make what I call a country western opera. And about, uh, may I just inter Please. put in there that either of those people, Towns or Blaze, they didn't necessarily need a publicist to beef up their bio or mm -hmm. their story. So when you called me the first time and said, what about a film about Blaze Foley? I go, well, that's a movie. Yeah. I mean, that 
no no way about it. Yeah. Even if you leave half of it out. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> it's a tough movie to end because, you know, the end of his life was is still difficult to parse. Um, I mean, there are certain things we know, but other things that are that remain murky and gray. But uh, there, there are also two interesting framing devices, Ethan, that you use in the make, making of the film. Uh, one is this interview being done with Charlie's character, with Towns Van Zandt and another musician, um, where, uh, are you the interviewer? Or? Yeah, 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 I play you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Um, I have to say, uh, as someone who's done many, many interviews, I'm pretty good at telling when an interview is kind of canned or not, and those interview, I mean, how did you do that? How much, was there some improv going on? Well, we had a set that was in the DNA of the idea, right, of casting musicians to play musicians. I was asking for Ben and Charlie's help to sniff out mo what's fake. And we had, I've spent my life acting in front of the camera, and I hate a, when a camera, you know, I just used the expression before, like like reheat, like a microwave. Like everybody knows, it's a pre-prepared pre meal that we are just going to reheat and eat. I don't want, I want what's happening in front of the lens to be creative. So yeah, these guys were creative in the interview scenes and in all the scenes. Yep. I was not just asking for, but basically begging for their contribution. They, Ben and Charlie have something to say about this music. This music means something to them. Uh, when I play a part, you want it to be personal. So it's not a quote unquote performance. It's actually a, a sharing. You know, yeah. this is this is a person. This it's a shamanist at its best, right? It's a shamanistic thing, and you invite you invite a spirit world, for lack of a better expression, to come and be a part of a collective dance. And it starts with us, and it it's in your mind as you watch it. I try to do the framing advice to be very clear that I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Anybody's story is based on point of view. Right, um, and even in the interview situation, one of the things I love when it opens with two characters telling you about Blaze, both of which you are kind of clear have differing points of view. Yeah, and that I don't even think we knew it when we were doing it. That as that proved to be extremely helpful because it lets the audience in. It invites the audience to go. Wait, why does he look like he doesn't believe him, <laughs> and why is he cutting him off, and why is that part threatening? Yeah, and. Why and, who, is, and why is he laughing about it being threatening? And why is he laughing about it being threatening? Exactly. I, I love the unreliability of the narrator yeah. in, in, those, in, in that part of the framing device. The, the other framing device, of course, is the, the show that Ben is doing, which is a kind of waiting for Godot thing. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Towns? Yeah. Is Towns here yet? <laughs> it's a whole night. Where's Towns? Uh, <laughs> that As question ben, got answered a few times in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah it uh, sure did. Well, um, we can come back to that, and I also want to pick up on the thread of you know, other musicians who are in the cast, but let's, you mentioned the song Cold Cold World, Ethan. Mm. You, you guys want to sure. play that for us? This is another Blaze Foley song. You'll find it on the original cast soundtrack to the new film called Blaze. I've tried for a long time, but I think I can't win. I could do it all better if I could do it again. Wherever I'm going, it's the same place I've been. Ain't it? Outside it was hot and inside I was cold The eyes of the young met the eyes of the old And what they were thinking
said it don't matter and she said I don't mind Then the bus driver said you still owe me Ain't it a cool, cool world no job and I can't get no rest I started out east but I ended up west and I'm so glad to be here I'm sure I won't get and I could sleep instead of tossing in bed And I find myself thinking I'd rather be dead And ain't it a cold, cold world Ain't it a cold song is Cold Cold World by Blaze Foley. He is the subject of Ethan Hawke's new film called Blaze, and uh, the character of Blaze Foley is played in the film by Ben Dickey, who you just heard singing lead on that song with Ethan Hawke and Charlie Sexton uh, playing here as well in the studio on this edition of the Soundcheck podcast from newsounds.org. It's our series of live in-studio performances. Ethan, uh, you directed the film. You also co-wrote it. Uh, We mentioned uh, Sybil Rosen before. Mm -hmm. Uh, you wrote it with her, right? She she yeah. wrote the book, but then worked with you on the script as well? Yeah, and she came down. Uh, when we were getting ready to start shooting, I remember I said to her, you know, I just want you to know um, you're welcome anytime. She said, oh, you can't keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, and you know, my wife was producing, and she's like, okay, well, we've got to find a house first. She's like, I will put you, I'll pitch a tent in the front yard of the production <laughs> office. I'll do costumes. I'll do makeup. I'll make lunch. Uh, she became in a normal situation that would be scary like that you would have this person around because you they might say that's not it it didn't happen like that the great thing about Sybil is she's an actor and she's an artist and she understood that we're not doing a reenactment that we're trying to use Blaze's music and his story to make a piece of art yeah she under, understood that in a very fundamental way, and so she could guide us to spiritual truths and invite us to a higher level of honesty. She could give uh, us confidence that our heart was in the right place. You know. Yeah. And what about uh, the rest of Blaze Foley's? And we should say Blaze and Foley were both pseudonyms. But what about his family? You know, what, what's there? Well, there's a great story there. Um, well, Marcia is his sister, and she she's the champion of his work and his art. Uh, she controls the estate, and she came by. Ben, tell the story of when she came by, and she brought us Blaze's guitar. Um, well, there's lots of wonderful mysteries and um, mystical in, uh, incidences and episodes that have happened making this movie. And one of them was that we were all anticipating Marsha coming because we were, th- um, you know, we were thrilled to meet her and we wanted to visit with her and we wanted to welcome her into this current of energy that we had all found ourselves participating in. And she brought with her these um, pieces of Blaze, that is, his hat and his guitar. And the guitar that he had when he died, and the hat he was wearing when he died, and they're both of which you know we had been looking at and um, studying and emulating. Um, <clears throat> so she brought them, and one of the things that was very 
apropos of the energy of the whole project was she told me that the guitar hadn't been played in probably 20 years and I just wanted to hold it you know and I figured it was going to be you know some aluminum string mess copper string mess and strings you know so I pulled it out of its case and I put his hat on and the guitar was in tune for me I never tuned it it just maintained it was be- it was in tune I actually u- the scene with Christopherson I'm actually playing Blaze's guitar wow and you know <laughs> That that is one of the great scenes yeah. in the film. And what's Chris funny is Chris plays his dad. It, and you can see his signature on the guitar, <laughs> um, which is another little magic thing. But yeah. you know, guitar players. If you tell guitar players, like, yeah, I had this guitar that had been in a suitcase essentially for twenty years, and I didn't have to tune it, you would be like, well, that's just not true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was very much true. It's like that Guy Clark's song. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so Ben, when when you are playing in yeah. the club mm-hmm. and we're waiting for towns, are you? Is that real? Is that? I mean, is that the sound? Is that a live performance that's going it's straight to film? It's all live performance. All yeah, right. there's no overdubs done for this deal. It's all uh, from the set in the moment. And, and that was the aim. That was the hope. You know, right. All of it, you know, when they're playing on the porch in the front. I had this situation where at Gurf, Charlie and Ben could just hang out on the porch and play. And we could record it. And so if there's sounds of birds or sounds of traffic, that's what there is. And the idea was to try to make sure not just that the music be live, uh, but that you capture the spirit of folk music. You know, mm-hmm. I've, Charlie's heard me say this before, but I remember as a kid getting Nashville Skyline and being really hypnotized by the opening uh, track of that girl from the north country johnny cash and bob dylan are playing that song and there's just mistakes all over it and the mistakes become a teaching of sorts they're uh they're just two guys hanging out and they're all of a sudden they're not superstars they're just like you they're just like your uncle and you have something to say and part of the idea of this movie is not to deify one person like the one thing i don't even the expression biopic creates this idea that one person's biography is more interesting than another Mm. and sadly most biopics are about famous people which then does another subconscious thing which is that famous people's lives matter and are worth telling and what blaze represented to me was a sea of artisans in the world who are working but to create and push forward the mediums so that the Michael Jacksons of the world or the, you know, Taylor Swift's of the world launch forward, yes. But there's a huge sea of energy of people mm-hmm. who care about art and who participate in acting, directing, music, painting. You know, I get compliments about this movie, for example, on the look of it, which I'm not responsible for, but I get the credit for it. I mean, I'm responsible in that it... it I hired good people, right? Right, but you don't actually control that. You know what effort the art director and the scenic designer and the cinematographer do, and and it's when things come together, it takes off all on its own. And so my hope was that the movie would symbolize that kind of authenticity. Well, and so it is not. You know, you're not deifying. Blaze Foley. He's a complicated guy. He's a difficult guy. He's a raging alcoholic. And, you know, that's all <laughs> part of what we see and what we hear. Uh, on the other hand, he's also like so patently human that it's hard not to yeah. kind of connect with him, you know? Um, what about the other humans? I mean, there are a couple of actual actors, you know, quote unquote actors. And then you have, you know, Charlie and Ben, and you have Alinda Segarra, who our listeners may know from her band, Hooray for the Riff Raff. Chris Christopherson, of course, is in both camps. But what was the, uh, the idea there? Well, you just said it. See, isn't that amazing? Chris, you just said is in both camps, right? And that's a testament to what Chris has achieved with his life, is he's proved a point that I felt that I wanted for Ben and Charlie, you know, is, is for them to say, you know what? Art is art, and Chris has actually succeeded at such a high level as a songwriter and as a musician and as an actor that you no longer differentiate Chris the musician. Chris, it's just Chris Christopherson, and whatever that energy is that is his, and and you feel it when you're around him. He's an old man now. He's an elder statesman of our planet, an old lion, but you still feel the molecules move 
in a certain different way when Chris is in the room. And he came to our set not as a favor. He had a secret of his own that he wanted to put in front of the camera. And it was, as a director of the movie, it was an honor, you know, to, to receive that. I mean, meaning there's, a, there's an artist in there. Right. And my point has always been, I used to do this for myself, which was to say, hey, man, just because I was in Dead Poets Society doesn't mean I have to, like stay in my lane and just act for a living and make sure I don't actually grow or develop as a human being. But to get to do that for other people and watch it work, mm. you know, what Charlie achieves with, I edited these guys' performances and the actor in me was so excited. They're, they're doing things, they're adding a level of details, whether it's voice, whether it's props, whether it's emotional, whether it's, there's a moment, um, it was incredibly important to me. I knew the shape of the moment. I wanted to see Blaze Foley listen to Towns Van Zandt play. It's like what this movie's about. Like a lot of other movies have plots, mm -hmm. right? I, want, I felt it actually was a plot point. What is it like to see, for lack of a better word, genius at play? And what it might mean for a guy who's struggling like Blaze, he's a working man's poet, right? Mm -hmm. He's working, he's working, he's working. And then one of my favorite towns of songs actually written after Blaze passed, but one of my favorites was Marie, is Marie. I think it's like William Faulkner as a song. And I wanted to watch Ben watch Charlie play that song. In the DNA of our project, we could do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could shoot in one take, Charlie playing Marie. I could shoot Ben listening, and they could both... See, and, and out of, I had this idea that Ben should say, where did that come from? And that would be the end of the, the line. And, and Charlie, when you say human, there's kind of a humanist. The camera keeps moving in on, on Towns. And he says, where did that come from? The other side of zippity doo -dah. you know, <laughs> which is not a line I could write, okay? And it's just... It's a play off the Towns thing, which I think he actually stole. There's two kinds of music, the blues and zippity doo -dah. <laughs> which is, Which is just, but to me, it's the essence of collaboration. You, you know, where Ben's feeling moved by something Charlie's really doing, Charlie's witnessing Ben's, what's happening with Ben. And so... That's what I mean when I say it's a creative yep. act. I didn't actually even, that wasn't planned to happen, you know? And it becomes the point of the scene. Yeah. Now, was it planned when you set out that Ben would write a song for the film? Oh, good question. That's a good question. Okay. Maybe it was in Ben's mind, and maybe <laughs> it was in my mind as an idea for him to get into character, you, you know, for him to make... To make it clear, you know, when you play these people, you just can't do an imitation. You have to do, you have to use yourself, your acting. Ben couldn't imitate Blaze's sense of humor. He had to find his wit, his wit. Well, the reason why these guys are so fun to be around is they're funny and they don't take yeah. themselves too seriously, right? And it really feels good mm -hmm. to be near them. And so we needed that. So if Ben's putting on a pretense of somebody else's sense of humor, that wouldn't be good. So... You know, I, I think it was a great idea for him to write a song, and he and Alia were. You could tell the story, but I'll tell my version first. Can That's I, and then Alia can, Shawcott, who plays yeah, Sybil. Who's amazing. But I had an amazing experience in the editing room because it was very important to me that this be all like Blaze and Towns' music, right? That's what the thing's mm -hmm. about. And I'm cutting the movie together, and I'm really struggling to find. I want one more vision of it. They fell in love in a treehouse. Uh, Blaze and Sybil and it's like it becomes this totem of hope and of purity and of natural creativity when creativity is like a wolf howling you know it's just it's effortless and I needed one more flashback for it but I couldn't find where it was and then I noticed that in one of the heads of a scene where Blaze is supposed to be looking at a pawn shop window of the guitar that he wants Ben was singing the song that he had written you know, because I wanted him, to, I said, you know, we, he was supposed to be singing and playing, imagining playing. The, so he sang a song that he had written. And then I noticed that the head of the flashback scene that I wanted, or the end of it, I'm sorry, I just let the tail of that scene play out. And Alia had said to Ben, will you sing me something? And Ben sang that song. And so it actually allowed me to intercut the song and place the flashback as if I had scripted it that way. Mm. I'm not supposed to give these things away, but I really hadn't. <laughs> and and I, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the sausage gets made. Yeah, <laughs> but it, I hope this isn't boring, but it was so interesting to me because it felt like in the editing room, it really felt like Blaze saying to me, give the 
get one song. Give him one track. <laughs> He's in, uh, is that kind of... Well, also, you know, I gotta say, Ethan is wonderfully humble, and he's playing that character to to the nines all the way here today. <laughs> mm-hmm. And earlier he said he let things happen. Mm-hmm. He let it be creative in every way, whether it's, I mean, because a great you know cinematographer getting the look of the film that way. He, oh, I had nothing to do with that. It's hard the right guy. But he lets all those things happen, including what he just said. So, you know, I really, when, that doesn't it, happen. It, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. um Late September, early October, I think it was, before we started filming in December, we got to have a meeting with Alia and meet her, and she was finishing a film, and I've been a very big fan of her work, and I think she's a very wonderful artist. So I was, A, I was nervous to meet her, because knowing what we were going to be portraying, and B, it was making the whole process more real. So we met and we talked, and it was very ceremonious and lovely, and, and I could tell that I would be fond of her as a person, and we talked later in the evening, and... I told her, you know, I can't even begin to tell you how nervous I am. I'm so, so nervous. I'm, I'm glad that we're meeting and we're friendly now, but I'm so nervous. And she leaned in and said, you know, I'm nervous too. I was so nervous to come meet y'all. I was so nervous to meet Ethan and meet you. And you got to figure out how to use it and don't lose it, you know, put it somewhere. And I know what that means because I'm a musician and I know what performing in front of people is. And, and it all started to remind me of what it's like to perform. So that night, I just took her advice and her her generosity of spirit and wrote a song that sort of I wanted just a halo around the two of us as people and like be our little something. I had I had no intention of trying to stick it in the soundtrack or make it part of the movie. <laughs> uh, it was just something that I, w- I wanted her to... I, w- I was like, we're going to sing this together and it'll be a lullaby that we'll have. We can hum it, we can just have it and one, you know, that's what it was for. Yep. And that's why it kept kind of coming up because I, I mean I told her I was like this is for Blaze and Sybil and this is for you and me, and it became something else and it was a wonderful treat to, to be able to have it. You know, we got to at the end of the of wrapping the movie very rushedly, we recorded the song with Blaze's guitar uh, in an environment like this with a bunch of people around, and that's what's on the soundtrack. The, uh, the soundtrack is for the, the new film called Blaze, the story of Blaze Foley, uh, who's portrayed by Ben Dickey. Alia Sharkat plays Sybil, and you want to play the song for us? Sure. This is Blaze and Sybil's Lullaby. down into hell dear you can jump down if you want to but you you can't come home there's a tall golden ladder stretches high up into heaven you can climb up if you want to but you can't come home or you could stay I know that home is wherever you are Let me ride the lonely miles with you You say such lovely words to me See your face inside the wind When the wind don't blow, I find your voice And fallen shadows need you close to me For my rhymes and rhyming rainbows Glide down earthly highways, but you, you can't come home Or you could stay know that home is where you are let me ride the lonely miles with you Oh, you could 
Of the trees for us, so darling, kiss me quick before I catch them blooms. <laughs> singing that normally. <laughs> wow. That sounds like it's direct from 1949. Yeah. <laughs> ben Dickey and uh, the lullaby that he wrote for the characters of Blaze and Sybil from the movie Blaze and uh, Charlie Sexton accompanying on guitar. Ethan Hawke co-wrote the uh, the film with Sybil Rosen and directed it and and sounds like you did most of the editing yourself. <laughs> um, no, I had a great editor. Great okay. editor. Well, but again, that's uh, to... To what Charlie was saying before, the director is the one with the vision, and y you you referred to this before as a kind of a country western opera, mm -hmm. and traditionally, opera was about mythic characters, you know, larger than life people, mm -hmm. uh, put up on the stage yep. for mere mortals to to see how the mm -hmm. other half lives. This is, in that respect, this is an anti-opera. Well, kind of, but I. I see them as so mythic you know when you think about falling in love in a treehouse i think of walden pond i think of eden mm. i mean I, I think of all things holy right making love outside what's better than that you know and and when you think of being shot dead in the street trying to help a friend of yours out that sounds like a tragedy and the those two truths right rammed up against each other and all this great art and all this great friendships. And uh, I, I, to me, it, it is operatic. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's humble. They're poor and they don't care about worldly things, but it's, it's the stuff of opera. And it's certainly the stuff of legend. You go down to Texas, if there's one thing's a legend, it's Towns Van Zandt. And sneakily coming up behind is... The story of Blaze. Yeah, well, not so sneaky now, thanks to you. <laughs> um, the film is called Blaze. It is in theaters now. Ethan Hawke, Charlie Sexton, Ben Dickey, who plays Blaze. Guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so Thank much. You, thanks, thanks, Thank you. That was great. This is Soundcheck. <laughs>